Okay, I recently bought from Dixie Gunworks this Uberti 1862 police model revolver. Now this is a 36 caliber revolver, but it's built on the 31 caliber pocket model frame. And they kind of did what they did with the uh, the 1860-44 in that they took a 1851 Navy frame, a 36 frame, and they cut a step in it and blew out the front of the cylinder to 44 caliber. And that's what they did with this. So they took a 31 caliber gun, cut a step down here, blew out the cylinder so they could chamber it in 36. And it's a very sleek little gun and I'm gonna just smooth it up a little bit before taking it out to the range. Actually, I was kind of surprised that this is in very good shape. Um, the main problem I've had with the 31 calibers, and since this uses exactly the same action, I expected to have the same problem with this, is that when you use them fast, they tend to over-rotate. But this gun is perfectly timed. So, that's one thing I won't have to do. I mean, typically on these, I have to shorten the hand up just a little tiny bit, and it's all take it completely apart, file a little bit off, put it completely back together and try it. So I don't have to do that on this one, but I'm going to take it apart, and I'm just going to smooth out any burrs, any rough spots, get all the grease and oil off of it, and get it ready to shoot. Here's a look at the main tools I'm going to use, irrespective of screwdrivers. I'm, of course, going to use a gunsmith set of screwdrivers. But the main tools I'm going to use are going to be various size stones and hones. Uh, and, you know, the typical cleaning stuff. I'm just going to have to punch the bore. And get the, the nipples off and clean all that stuff out. So... This is it, basically. A bunch of stones from Brownells, a bunch of hones from Brownells, and, uh, and a little bit of emery cloth, and we'll be good to go. Okay, I disassembled the, uh, the cylinder. I took the nipples out. I cleaned everything out, degreased it. Now what I'm doing is I'm just using 320 grit emery cloth, and I'm using it to polish the entire inside of the arbor hole in the cylinder. And that's just to smooth it up. There we go. I'm just going to use the ceramic stone and I'm going to rotate the cylinder around it just to give it a final polish. Well, I like to work on the frame itself before I work on the action parts. And one thing I'll say is that this is very cleanly machined. Very nice. I've been seeing some really good work lately out of Uberti. I'm very pleased with them on that score. I mean, I've seen some of these guns from some manufacturers that had huge, you know, lumps, cankers, pits, uh, and tons of machining marks. But this is pretty smooth. I mean, really, there's not that much to do with it. But when we take a look at the action parts... Oops, don't want to lose that. Okay, so you can see where the bluing is rubbing off this. So that's, that's rubbing on the side. And uh, we want to relieve that friction. So I'm going to do some work on these and on the action inside. And you can see the same thing here on the hammer. Not much, but there's little scratches over there. So we're going to do just a little bit of work on the inside of the frame. And then we're going to polish up these parts. And we will be good to go. Okay, so for the framework, I kind of like using the stone right here. some oil on it. I like it because it fits inside this area and it keeps everything perfectly flat so I don't have to worry about dishing anything while I'm polishing and all I want to do is just smooth it out. 
So I'm going to go over the entire inside of the slot on both sides and polish that out so that we get the hammer, you know, falling freely. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side and uh, then we can start looking at the action parts. Okay, the hand slot looks pretty clean, but I'm still going to just stone it a little bit with this Brownells hand slot stone. Just to get any roughness out of there, and I do feel a little bit. Okay, that, that looks really good now. I don't know if you can see it in there. But that is nice and clean. Okay. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just polish up the arbor. And I'm going to use three different grits of emery cloth. 320, 400, and 600. And I'm just going to shoe shine it. Until I get the whole thing done. Okay. So, I'm just going to do the other two grits and try to get that nice and smooth. So we got no friction or binding on the cylinder now. So we're done with the frame. And we can start working on the action parts. Alright, I'm going to start with the hammer. I know I'm getting some rubbing over here. So I'm going to use that same flat stone. And I'm just going to stone that down. Still have a little more up here I want to do. But we're getting close, so I'm just going to get that stoned, and then we can move to the hammer nose. Okay, these little guns tend to have a real issue with cap sucking. And what that is, is the hammer falls on a cap, explodes it. And then it pulls it back off of the nipple when you cock it again, and the cap drops off, and it falls between the hammer and the action. The hammer, when it falls for your next shot, doesn't reach the cap to set it off because the piece of cap is wedged in here between this and the frame and then you can't even pull it back and it just locks the whole gun up. And um, over the years I've had a lot of trouble with these these small frame guns especially with cap sucking. So I've tried a few different things and the thing that seems to work the best is what I call defanging the hammer nose. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, you can see the little slot in here, it's a safety slot. And I need this, and because this is only a five shot revolver, I'm definitely going to be using the safety slot. So I've got a coarse Brownells hone here, and I am going to round off the point on each side of this. Alright, so I'm going to getting the hone right in there and I'm rounding off that point. I'm going to get it in on this side too. This is difficult to show on camera and I've had several requests to do better videos where you can see what I'm doing. So I'm hoping that this one will come out. All right. Okay, now I just want to break all the sharp edges here. I don't want anything to be able to grab on to that cap. But I still want the slot to operate as a safety slot. I want to be able to catch that pin in it, right? So what I'm doing is I'm running, you may be able to see it better on this side, though this side is harder for me to do without getting in the way. I'm running this in this slot and I'm breaking the sharp edges. Right? So I'm using this coarse hone and I'm getting it right inside here. Right? And I'm breaking down the sharp edges. I'm going to hone across the face a little bit. Okay. I want 
everything baby smooth. So all these casting scales and everything, it's taken off. Take this flat stone and I'm going to get in there with that. Okay, now I'm going to get in with a needle file and just kind of work on that slot right there. Try to do it left-handed so you can maybe see it better. All right, I just want to, I'm working on the top of the slot. And a little bit on the sides here. I'm going to go over it with a stone again. All right, there we go. So, if I did my job right, that should cut way down on the cap sucking. Okay, I'm gonna polish up the uh, the hammer screw now. These these are kind of a pain to do because there's not really enough to get them in a vise anywhere so that you can shoe polish them. So I just have to use a really tight pinch and then turn it with a screwdriver. I'm gonna do it with 320. 400 and 600 grit. Oh, I'm going to polish the shaft of this the same way I did the hammer bolt. The trigger is not rubbing anywhere, so all I'm going to do is polish up the pin screws. And that's it. I can put the gun back together. Okay, we're reassembled and ready for prime time. And the gun feels noticeably smoother now. There's no hitch and it's giddy up. So I think, I think we're ready to cast up some bullets and get out to the range.